One of the most popular and terrifying urban legends to come out of the state of Virginia is the legend of the Bunny Man. I honestly wouldn't be too surprised if you've heard of him in some capacity or another. The story goes that the Bunny Man was an escaped convict from an insane asylum who lived in the woods, wielded an axe, and wore a giant, dirty rabbit suit. He dismembered and feasted on wild bunnies, and he really liked his privacy. Some say the Bunny Man was a real person, while others say he's a spirit that haunts the Colchester Bridge. Either way, you don't want to be caught near the bridge after midnight, or you might end up like one of his rabbits. Skinned, gutted, and hanging from a rope, quietly swaying in the breeze for some poor soul to eventually find you. Like I mentioned before, our urban legend is going to take us all the way over to Virginia, where the cities of Colton and Fairfax meet. It's the turn of the 20th century, and the city of Fairfax was just working on putting the pieces back together while also experiencing a boom in population. Cause you know, the Civil War was just a thing, so you've got a lot of young men coming home to their wives and are making up for lost time. So the men were back from the war, the women were having their babies, and the tiny town was quickly growing into a densely populated city. But an increase of residents in Fairfax meant there would also be an increase of shadier individuals inhabiting the town as well. Suddenly, the small farming community where everybody knew everybody was no longer a thing. Residents became less trusting of each other and started locking their doors at night. Not to mention, something we know now that we didn't back then is how difficult it is for soldiers to readjust to civilian life after returning home from war. They were dealing with mental illnesses and conditions like PTSD, anxiety, psychosis, and depression, but there wasn't any sort of proper therapy or services set up for these young, war-torn guys. They didn't know much about mental illness back then, and men who came home from war were expected to be these strong, stoic heroes, when really they were just these young adults who were mentally scarred and completely broken from what they endured. In those days, when a soldier was showing signs of depression or PTSD, they used terms like soldier's heart or shell shock, but really, it was mental illness that wasn't being properly treated. This led to a rise in crime in the city, which apparently led to them building a state institution for the criminally insane just on the border of where Fairfax meets Clifton. In the deep, dark forest, of course. Because you wouldn't build an asylum on the beach. It's gotta be someplace ominous and foreboding. I mean, stick with the theme here. But once the institution was built, most of the original residents from the nearby town of Clifton protested that they didn't want to live near the asylum and no longer felt safe. The facility created this big public outrage from the town that would eventually lead to its closing in 1904. The town was happy, but the convicts sure weren't. They were now going to be transferred by bus to a new prison, and during this transfer was where the legend of the Bunny Man was born. So the story goes that the convicts were piled onto this old bus that was headed for the Lorton Reformatory, but on the way, the bus took a hard swerve and crashed. The hardened criminals looked at the shattered windows and dazed officers and saw their chance. A few dozen inmates charged the front, while others broke out their side windows, launching themselves out and dashing off into the darkness. Over the course of the next several months, almost all of the escaped convicts would be found and picked up. All except for two, Marcus Loster and Douglas Griffin. Months would pass while they searched for their remaining escapees, but it was as if the two men had just vanished into the night. Finally, one night when they were out searching for Marcus and Douglas, they noticed something they'd seen only a few times before. The bodies of several mutilated and half-eaten bunnies scattered on the ground. But this time, the carcasses of the rabbits had been left in a sort of trail that dotted the forest floor, and it didn't look like they'd remembered to cover their tracks. Follow the bunny and see where it goes. This is when the detectives would finally stumble upon the alleged Bunny Man's Bridge after following this awful trail of nightmares. Trail of night hairs. 
I'll see myself out. So this overpass was the Colchester Bridge, or as it's still lovingly referred to by residents today as Bunny Man Bridge. The story goes that under the overpass, the cops found more mutilated rabbits that had been strung up and hung from the bridge, kind of like wind chimes that swayed gently in the breeze. To their horror, the men saw that past the hanging rabbit carcasses was the body of Marcus Loster, dangling from the bridge with a handwritten note attached to his foot that read, You'll never find me, no matter how hard you try. Signed, The Bunny Man. Bum bum bunny. <laughs> oh, God. According to legend, if you dare walk below the bridge after midnight, the bunny man will cut you up and hang you just like he did to Marcus. But whether or not you believe the stories to be fact, fiction, or fluff is truly for you to decide. And while most urban legends become more dramatic and embellished over the years as they're told, you might be surprised to learn that the legend of the bunny man really is rooted in a mysterious incident that happened in Fairfax in the 70s. So while that might not necessarily go along with our turn of the century, insane asylum themed legend, there really was a man who dressed in a rabbit suit, wielded an axe, and terrified the city of Fairfax for a brief moment in history. This legitimate account was reported about in the papers, and since then, dozens of different stories of Bunny Man lore have emerged over the years. And God, some of them are so melodramatic and fun. Let's hop to it. Other variations of the story include that bunny man Douglas Griffin was first committed to the asylum as a 12 year old after attacking his parents with an ax on Easter Sunday. Clearly we're embellishing a bit, but wow. We love a good story. Other versions claim Douglas was the only inmate who was never found, and that on Halloween night, several teens were hanging out under Bunny Man Bridge when they were attacked at the stroke of midnight. It's always the stroke of midnight in these types of stories. But let me ask you this, have you ever referred to midnight with the word stroke in your life? Like seriously, we just casually accept this phrase every time we hear it in a scary story or fairy tale. But darling, I live for the drama. So at the stroke of midnight, the teens were attacked and found hanging beneath the bridge the next morning, gutted like rabbits. And like so many of my favorite urban legends, this one has all the terrifying details, but none of the important ones, like what year it happened or the names of the people it happened to. So you know that this is probably a credible story. The officers barely had time to collect themselves when they heard a maniacal laugh coming from atop the bridge, Standing there in a makeshift bunny mask made out of rabbit fur and waving an axe was the bunny man. According to this story, as he cackled and howled, he was struck by an oncoming train. There's another tale of teenagers that would share an encounter with the bunny man. And honestly, this one is a bit similar to the other, so I wouldn't be surprised if they were just different versions of the same story. The difference with this one was that a couple of teen dudes were driving with their girlfriends on Halloween night, of course, when they decided they wanted to scare them. They headed out to Old Bunny Man Bridge, where his soul allegedly haunts it since being hit by the train, and dragged their screaming, giggling girlfriends out of the car to tease them, saying that the ghost of the Bunny Man was gonna get them. Sounds like a blast, guys. It was almost midnight, and I guess the teasing became too much for one of the girls, and she broke away from the group and ran back onto the road. At the stroke of midnight, oh brother, she saw a bright flash of light under the bridge, and when the light faded, she saw all six of her friends' bodies mutilated and hanging beneath the bridge, and an axe stuck in the windshield of their car. Ooh. So yeah, obviously, if real teenagers had actually been found dangling from a bridge, you'd think there'd be some sort of report about it in the archives. But it ain't. But just because that version of the story isn't in the archives, doesn't mean the bunny man isn't. 
He so totally is. In 2002, a Fairfax County archivist published what is considered to be one of the only credible and foremost papers on the subject. And I think the real story is even stranger than the legends. On October 18th, 1970, Air Force Academy cadet Robert Bennett was sitting in the car with his fiance on a road in Fairfax. The road was near Robert's uncle's house, and it was nearing midnight when a man in a white suit suit with long bunny ears appeared at the front of their car. He screamed at the couple that they were trespassing on his private property and that he had their plates. He hurled a hatchet through the front car window and thank the lord neither of them were hurt, but they were super shaken up and filed a police report. The incident was reported in the Washington Post and only two weeks later, the bunny man struck again. About a block away from the first sighting, a private security guard named Paul Phillips was doing his rounds at a new housing development in the neighborhood when he spotted somebody on the front porch of one of the new unoccupied homes. According to the Washington Post article that was legitimately published on October 31st, Phillips said he started to talk to the man, but that's when he started chopping. The dude picked up his axe, which I can only assume glints in the moonlight, and take several swings at a post on the porch, screaming again about people trespassing and threatening to chop his head off. After the newspapers ran the story, apparently Bunny Man himself contacted the local authorities. He told them he didn't want the new houses being built in his woods and that there would be consequences if they did. What? No money eggs at Easter? He told authorities that he'd meet with them at the Colchester Bridge, but never showed up and was never heard from again. But when word spread that the bunny man had contacted the authorities himself, there was an all out media frenzy. Stories and sightings of the bunny man were being reported from all around the country, leading to dozens of local teens trekking out to the bridge for a thrill. In 1970 alone, there were apparently over 50 bunny man sightings reported from all over, and nowadays, it's tradition for local kids on Halloween night to go exploring under the bridge in hopes of spotting the man in the fursuit. The archivist who looked into the legend, Brian Conley, was actually able to track down the now-married couple who first reported the incident over 45 years earlier. Robert Bennett and his wife, whose name I can't find anywhere, which really bothers me because she has a name other than Robert's wife, confirmed for Brian what they saw that night when they met with him. They told him vivid details from the incident, as well as Robert's aunt who helped them afterwards. She even remembers combing the shattered window glass out of their hair. To this day, no one knows who the bunny man was or what he wanted. Brian the archivist believes it was possibly an elderly resident who owned the property that the couple was allegedly trespassing on. Nevertheless, the town of Clifton has full on embraced the legend of the bunny man and sells t-shirts and souvenirs with his image and put up a haunted Halloween attraction every year in his honor. And while the legend may have been embellished upon and exaggerated over the years to become this frighteningly bizarre tale, I think the truth of what actually happened that night on the road is just as terrifyingly strange. And that about does it for this episode. Remember, if you happen to find yourself wandering beneath the Colchester Bridge and see the shadow of a large man in bunny ears, you better hippity hoppity get the hell off his property. See you next time!